welcome everybody to this wonderful Rumble Wrestling Promotion Show here at the Spotlight in Hoddleston. Lee Bamber, your commentator at ringside for tonight's main event. There are some great matches on the way, including a ladies match, a title match, and a chain match. They're ready down there. Let's join our MC, Steve Barker. Side. 
for all the South East favourite wrestling promoters, Rumble Wrestling Promotion to this ladies clash. Mia Cortez versus the imposing Dominita. Chris Hatch, your referee in charge of this one. One fall, one submission, or one knockout to decide the winner. The ladies come to Hoddleston. This is going to be a big challenge in all senses of the word for Mia Cortez. Mia <laughs> wrestling out of Milton Keynes, Don Manita. Come all the way down from the Midlands to be with us here today. So away we go then. Ooh, throwing an early uh, side swipe, Dominita. She was going to do a fireman's carry, it just turned into a complete drop straight onto her back. And that's taken the wind out of here, of course, as he's only had 25 seconds of this match, and this could be a problem for Mia Cortez already, the goddess of dragons, they call her. She's going to need an influence from somewhere against Dominita. Mia Cortez, one of the top names of the women's division. But Dominica, as the name would suggest, is going to totally dominate this one. 310 pounds of Dominica. She says, and she said in the dress room before we came in, no one is as tough, as quick, as smart, or as agile as I am for my weight. So, that's what she said. She's going to want to try and make, make light work of Romeo Cortez. A beautiful dragon is in all sorts of trouble at this early stage, less than a couple of minutes into this match. She's gonna fight. She's really gonna fight. Oh, and Dominita having a go at the referee as well. She will argue with anyone that uh, will listen to her. Absolute powerhouse from the West Midlands. There's absolutely nowhere to go. She's trying to battle her way out of that corner. <laughs> Dominita is just absolutely wrenching her to the floor. She's going to need this crowd here at Hollywood to get behind her fairly soon. Make it a bit of a comeback. Crystal Thrubs. Yes, nice early trip. Did that right up close to Dominique. You didn't give her a chance to step over and get out of that one, so that was a neat little trick. And she calls herself the goddess of dragons. She says she has fire in her soul. I hope she remembers this of it, because she's going to need every ounce of fire, every ounce of determination to beat. Oh! Dominique was Chris Hatch is, oh my word, he was distracted there and he didn't see. Dominita doesn't need to employ these tanks, she's a good enough wrestler as it is. She's got the power behind her anyway. Now this powerhouse from the West Midlands. Can light work of this, and again, referee tells her to break the hold. The count of five goes on. She doesn't break by five, she's disqualified. You've got until the count of five to let go. And then she'll find herself back in that dressing room. It's absolutely taking no notice of the referee, so the five warning count goes on again. you can see on the camera there but Dominita on the on her side has got the initials JC 
stands for Josie Coppin. That's her real name, Josie Coppin. And for those of you around in wrestling in the uh, 80s and 90s, you might remember her dad, John Coppin. And a lot of back uh, behind the scenes work. Ringman, assistant to the promoters. A lot of respect for the memory of uh, John Coppin. Well, this is his daughter, Josie, and she wears the JC with pride on her shoulder. What she also does with pride is demolish all opponents that stand in her way, and <coughs> Mia Cortez is in trouble. Now, where are those feet? Are they actually on the hair? Yes, they are. They're on the hair. Referee spotted it, and again, the five warning count goes on. Chris Hatch, our referee from uh, Orpington, is really going to have to do something about someone who's because he's taking liberties now. Agile, quick and tough. She is the whole package, is Dominica. Oh, neat move, neat move. We really want to see Mia Cortez's fire in her soul that can never be extinguished. That's what she says. She's going to need to bring that fire. She's going to need to take Dominita into the Dragon's Den. She's going to need to find that inner strength. That fire must burn in her belly. She needs something and she needs it now. Because Dominita is not going to give up. Chris Hatch with that fire count again. And he's not refereeing. Chris is a very, very busy man. He's a proofreader, he's an editor, he's a lot of work within the, the media side of wrestling. He's not been on holiday for six years, as Chris Hatch. He's certainly working hard tonight on this one. Right, Simon's carry takes her down. Can she bring her down to the pin? <laughs> Sitting drop kick. And another one. Back elbow this time, maybe. No. Another leg drop. Guillotine. Splash down! Just the counter, too. I think Mia Cortez thought that was a three. Well, the ladies' division in the UK is certainly going from strength to strength. A lot of promoters have put on some excellent matches with some great lady wrestlers. Oh! The side demolition didn't quite work. As you say, ladies are getting more and more popular. In fact, some promoters are putting on a ladies only show, how's it? It's amazing to think it, ladies wrestling was banned in the capital by the LCC in the 1920s, the GLC after that, the Greater London Council. We didn't even see ladies wrestling in London until the ban was lifted, which was in 1987. As recently as that, ladies wrestling was banned in London until 87. And to celebrate the lifting of the ban, the ladies made their debut in the Royal Albert Hall back in April of 87. Tag match with Plonga, Kate and Nicky Monroe against Rusty Blair and Mitzi Mueller. What a night that was. Meanwhile, Dominita <coughs> connects with the forearm smashes. Mia Cortez just needs to find something against this absolutely imposing, unstoppable tour de force that is Dominita. 310 pounds of trouble. And here comes the dragon into the dragon's den comes Dominita no standing choke hold 
Ozzy has got to fight every inch for this one. Tries to reverse press. Oh, now she's in trouble. Oh, could have lifted her for a submission move. But the Midlander decides to just absolutely face plant Mia Cortez. And say Chris Hatch hasn't had a holiday for six years. He's going to want to break after this one. She's just taking time just to, she's not even arguing with the crowd, she's just giving them a hard stare. And the full 310 pounds straight in the face of Mia Cortez. Now there are some that might be surprised that Mia Cortez has lasted this long. She's not going to drop her away from the top rope or even the middle rope. She is! Oh! That's it! There really is no coming back from that, is there? I defy anybody to survive that. Dominita, the winner of this lady showdown here at Hoddleston. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the first wrestler at ringside. Can we have the second finalist to the ring, please?
ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is for the newly created European Rumble Championship. It's to be wrestled over a time limit of 15 minutes with the one fall, one submission or knockout to decide the winner. If at the end of 15 minutes the referee's decision will be on a points decision to decide the winner and the championship. Let me introduce the two wrestlers again to you, coming from the red corner from South London, Danny Black. And from the blue corner from Hertfordshire, Nino Brandt. So ladies and gentlemen, as this is the first contest for the European Championship, and because both wrestlers are from England, we please ask you to be upstanding for the national anthem. Thank you, Steve Barker, and welcome everybody to Hoddesdon, to the Spotlight Theatre. This is the very first time this four-man knockout tournament has taken place. Okay, guys, I spoke to you in the dressing room. We expect a freely match. Defend yourself at all times, and good luck to both. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Black to the red corner, Nido Bryant from the blue corner. Thank you, Steve. Steve Parker, our MC, the new European Rumble Championship. As Steve said, it's the first time. It's a brand new title. And a brand new belt. <laughs> There's no defending champion. But who will be the inaugural champion? The first champion. That's Lee Bamba at ringside. Bring you commentary on this fantastic match. With Steve Gray as your referee. One fall, one submission, or one knockout will decide the winner of the younger, lighter, more agile stars of uh, UK wrestling. Danny Black from South London, Nino Bryant from Boreham Wood. It's, uh, it's a lovely championship, belt, absolutely brand new. You get a chance to have a look at that later on. These two have wrestled before, but not very much. <clears throat> Their styles are kind of similar. Not going to be uh, a, a lot in this. Danny Black made his debut in 2017. Nino Bryan just a year later. Weight-wise, there's not a lot in it either. And 60 kilograms for Nino Bryan. Danny Black are calling the kid without fear. We mentioned before one officially appeared at the Clapham Grand, a magnificent uh, venue to show your talents in. Clapham Grand been used quite a bit for um, MMA as well over the last few years, mixed martial arts. So it's going to be difficult to call this one, both for the, uh, the crowd here in uh, Hoddesdon. Nino's going to have his fans, Danny's going to have his fans. And they're both great wrestlers, both likeable young men as well. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of handshakes and respect here. And you certainly couldn't call this one. Side 
head grab in favor of Danny Black. South London versus Hartford. Just putting on that uh, arm bar. A neat little takedown. That's room as well to do it. That's going to be a little respect here from both men. They've certainly studied each other's moves and holds and videos and YouTube pieces. Are they going to be able to take anything by, by surprise? Because I certainly know that when Nino has watched Danny in action a few times, and Danny has studied Nino's matches. Always a tip to do that for wrestlers. You have to study your opponent. And nowadays, of course, there's plenty of uh, footage available on YouTube, etc. Just to give you a bit of an idea of what might be coming. Right, it's got the legs trapped, and if you can get one hand, which he's now got, put it onto the other hand and maybe turned it into a surfboard, decides against it. He's got a two in one side combination here. Those legs are locked. And so is the arm. Now Nino has nowhere to go apart from the ropes. That is the only way, way out of that one. Finds the rope. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what Nino was complaining about there. That was a good solid move from Danny Black and uh, Nino needed to get to the rope to uh, cause a break there. Back elbow and a cover. Back to that very powerful looking side headlock. Uh, Nino tells me in the dressing room that is uh, one of his dream opponents. He'd love to get in against Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Danielson as we used to know him when he wrestled over here a few years ago. <clears throat> He'd love to say yes, yes, yes to Daniel Bryan. But right now, he's got his handful with Danny Black. Close line that stunned Bryan a little bit. Now that's not exactly legal and uh, Steve Gray will have a few words to say about that. Five minutes gone, ten minutes to go. Five minutes gone, ten minutes to go. It's only a 15-minute match, this one. They can't hang about. They've got to do it. They've got to get stuck in quite quickly. It's just ten minutes remaining. Now the kid without fear has a chance here. Certainly the style of wrestling and the uh, gymnastic ability of the wrestlers has evolved over the years. If you've been following wrestling for a long time, you'll see how the style has changed. These are newer, younger, faster high flyers really taking over the business. You have to go way back to the 1930s when wrestling first started in the UK in uh, town halls and civic centres and baths down the UK. Nicely done! That's the Bryant special and Danny Black knows all about that, doesn't he? My word, look at the face of Black, he's in trouble. That's winded him more than anything. Now what's Bryant about to do? He's firing up, ready for something. This is a very important match. This is the inaugural European title from Rumble Promotions, a brand new title, a brand new belt. Every wrestler would like to win a title, but of course, only one wrestle, wrestler can ever, ever, ever be the first champion. It'll change hands over the years, but who'd like to be the first? Well, this is an all great of the day. Both of these would like to have their name engraved on that belt as the very first ever Rumble European champion. Nice switch from Brian. Neatly out, almost reverse monkey climb, he's got him trapped. 
count of two. And again, another cover. Traps his legs as well. Just a car. Referee Steve Gray, the former British world and European lightweight champion, counts to two. How nice we have a brand new title that one of the most respected names in wrestling, Steve Gray, as referee. Head mare, but he's got himself caught out by that because Danny Black, will, yes, gets himself neatly out of that. On for the side suplex. The forearm smashes, a couple of quick jabs. He's exchanging blows now, both are looking a little bit tired here. A jab, a back elbow, a follow through. Nice chop to the throat. And again, uppercut. Again to that stage where both these boys are getting a little bit tired. Who wants it more? I just hope that one of these two boys look down and just see that belt waiting at the timekeeper's table. That, that will inspire them. Such power from Danny back there. Turns Nino inside out. Kenny rolling for a cover. One, two. Well, we're only going to be just over five minutes away with this match. And when the, the timekeeper calls five minutes, that will inspire both of the wrestlers to really go for it because it's not much time. One foot he dropped it, you don't see that very often. Ooh. I think Danny Buck was expecting something else. Comes down. Oh! And Steve Gray's hand was almost coming down from the three there. Well, we say. Ten minutes gone. Five minutes to go. Five minutes to go. That's the call we were talking about. That's the message. It's not just a message of time. It's not just a message of five minutes. It's a message of determination, for guts, for tenacity, for desire. Who wants this the most? If there's only five minutes left, They've got to get up. They've got to fight. Danny Black cannot stay on that canvas no matter how much he's hurting. If he can't get up now, it's the end of the match. Nino's got the fire. He wants him to get up. Well, the referee's going to have to check on Danny Black because he looks out of it right now. Most of us are going to hear there's just five minutes to go. Five minutes to go before a chance of a title will be jumping to their feet and giving it absolutely everything. But Danny Black is out on his feet. Now Nino can take advantage of this, he's got to. He was kidding! He was kidding all the time! Snap Snooplek! He's either found the fire or he was kidding here. Oh. Here we go again. Down for almost a super cow driver. That one looks nasty. But Nino just kicks him out. They can catch their breath, but they've got to throw everything into this. Three minutes and ten seconds left. We're all watching the clock now. Now it's Nino's Three turn. Three minutes to go. Three minutes. And don't forget, in the event of this being a draw at the end, it's down to 
referee Steve Gray to call this one. It will be on a points decision. The criteria is attack, entertainment value, near falls, near chances, and overall superiority. This could count for many points, but misses. Nino moves out the way. Two and a half minutes. Well, everyone's watching the clock here. So it's the first time the Rumble European title has been fought for. It's a brand new belt. Have a look at that in a minute. Just over two minutes left now. The time will be called for two minutes in about five seconds. It's going to be mighty close. So now Danny Black is in trouble. Here comes the call. We said right at the beginning of this match it was 50-50 uh, evens and we couldn't call it. Nino has a chance. High splash down. One, two. Kicks out now is Danny Black's chance. That's a three. That's a three. Danny Black has taken the title. And there's going to be plenty of handshakes on this one, I'm sure. The crowd are silenced by this. Let's get the official Ladies result. Steve Barker. Boys and girls, before I announce the result, I think you'll agree there's two young men here. That have just won the Rumble Championship and in the last 14 minutes and before we announce the result I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation to both wrestlers. <laughs> but we are on the contest and the first Rumble Wrestling European Champion Danny Black! I know why you don't like me. You see a good looking man, confident, dressed to the lines, money in the bank, talent. Woohoo! Dripping off my body. And you can't relate, can you? Of course you can't. Ironically, as much as it pains me to say it, I used to be just like you. When I grew up, there wasn't carpet on the floor. There wasn't food in the cupboard. I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the strongest. I took a few beatings in my time. But that right there 
is the main difference. See, I took my beats. I kept moving forward. I didn't blame anybody else. I own my journey. I got bigger. I got stronger. I attained wealth all on my own because I know exactly who I am. I'm the king of the earth. Every knee will bend. Every head will bow. And every tongue confess. Tightness is greatness. Then this is a very special match indeed, making his way to the ring right now from London, the All Nations Champion, that's what that belt is, Tate Mayfair from London, he says Tateness is greatness, welcome everybody to some luxury fighting, that's what you'll play, but today here at Hollister, not a straightforward match he's involved in. It's not for the title, he's just bringing the belt in to show off that he is the All Nations Champion. He's a model, an actor, a singer, a bass guitarist. He's the greatest human being in the world, it will have you believe. Let's get down to ringside for the official introductions then with your Master of Ceremonies, Steve Barker. It's the first wrestler to touch 
each consecutive corner pads. One, two, three, four. If one of the his opponent touches in between, if Tate Mayfair has got the three, Sigmanelli touches the fourth, it then goes back to Sigmanelli and Tate Mayfair is cancelled. So you must touch four consecutive corner pads without your opponent touching the opposite corner. So both wrestlers will now be chained together by the referee. Well, Chris Hatch is having trouble attaching that uh, chain on to Tate Mayfair. Let's hope he can attach it. So Steve Barker explained, and we'll do it again. Yes. So we'll run through the rules again in a minute because you're not absolutely certain about what's going on here. Pretty straightforward, it's self-evident when we get going. So Chris Hatch is uh, the man in charge. So residents, you both know the rules, the referee knows the rules, the fans know the rules. It's the first wrestler to touch four consecutive corner pads. Commence wrestling! So away we go then. No falls, no submissions, no knockouts, no disqualifications. One to take my face, one to Simonelli. So we're back, that squared that completely. That one. Two to Simonelli. One to take my face, one to take the other. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go, Steve Barker explained it and it, you have to touch four That's consecutive to corner pads. It doesn't matter where you start, but once you've hit a corner pad, you then go in order around the ring. But should the wrestler, should your opponent block it, it's a raise and you have to start again. So simonelli has got one behind him. That's two. Two to Simonelli. There's one behind you, Sid. That's it, yeah, go on in. That's three to Simonelli. Well, if you can get to that blue corner, he's won the match in about one minute, 12 seconds. Mayfair's need to touch a pad to cancel it out. And there we go. One to take Mayfair's. The kingpin of suave violence is strutting his way around. There is a very little rules in this match, by the way, when you're watching this at home. Three to take my face. The referee will watch it for reasons of safety, but otherwise anything goes. There's no disqualification unless an extreme circumstance. There are no falls, no submissions, no knockouts, it doesn't matter. It's all about touching four consecutive pads. This tough steel chain shackles them together, and Mayfest can't quite reach that corner. Referee Chris Hatch from uh, Orpington. Watching this one very close. He needs to keep a little bit of a distance because with the flip of the chain, that is quite a nice one. So one for Sid Manelli. <coughs> so it doesn't matter what corner you start in, but once you do, you can still go left or right, but you must do them consecutively. So having touched that white corner pad, Manelli could go for a red or the blue. He's got to work his way around the ring. But of course, Mayfair's will use that rope. That chain, that thick, steel, reinforced chain cause some carnage, some damage and some injury while he does it. You've got to weaken your opponent while they're laying prone on the canvas. That's when you nip round and touch the corner pad. Oh! One for Manelli. Now which way is he going to go? He's going to punish Mayfair's first. Not a good way around you go. 
He's going for the red corner. Now he has to go for the white, the neutral pad just behind Chris Hatch. That's the next one he's got to get. You've got to do him consecutively. Nicholas's Mayfair touches the pad. That's broken the collection. And that's the one that Sid needed to go for. And he's got it. Three, he just needs the blue. Again, covered by the referee at the moment, but Chris will move out of the way should Manelli head that way. That's the only one more pad that he needs. Well, they call Mayfair the king of suave violence, but he will be experiencing this sort of violence match. Wrapping that chain around the ring post. Because Mayfair's dad was a martial artist and his granddad was a bare knuckle boxer. So he can mix it, he can be a grand and suave and cultured. So he can also get stuck in with some serious fighting. Now Manelli's going to be in trouble here because even if he moves forward, yeah, that's going to happen. This is very clever from Tate Mayfair. He's got him trapped. One to Tate Mayfair. Two Oh! All the men, Sid. All the men. Or don't bother and quickly run around the ring. But the trouble is, how long is that chain? Can he reach? Can he reach the neutral corner with that chain? It's not long enough. He's got it. So Mayfair is in trouble, but he's got to make sure that there's some distance between them. Now, I'm not 100% certain if you can touch corner posts outside the ring. I suspect you can't. We uh, ran our eye over the rule book before we started. And I can't remember saying you have to be actually in the ring to do it. They are still chained together. And that's the only thing. So I think we could still touch the corner pad from outside the ring. Up to the referee to call that one though. Need some clarification on that. Meanwhile, of course, there is no escape. And I think since. Oh! You heard how loud that is. That is a solid chain, and that caught Sid. It's like catching a big fish, isn't it? You're you're landing a giant marlin off the coast of Puerto Rico. Shooting marlins swim off the coast of Puerto Rico. Anyway. That was neat. Well, they're making no attempt to touch a pad, so perhaps it doesn't count outside the ring. Or perhaps it doesn't matter. As long as you do that, to take Mayfairs, that's the important thing. Well, it was the great Sid Scala who trained Tate Mayfair originally. I wonder what Sid would think of what's happening right now here at the spotlight in Hodgson. There's two Manelli's heading to the red post. Yes. Oh. So you've got the added frustration of being just shackled to your opponent, but in addition to that, of course, you've got quite a lethal weapon you can't escape from. And Mayfair is absolutely wrapping it round the neck of Manelli. Now, the referee, as I say, he can call it in the interest of safety, so that is the only rule in this match. In the interest of safety, he can pause the break. Although we say no disqualifications, if that Mayfair absolutely loses his fall and inflicts unspeakable hospital, well, hospital needing pain on Manelli, Chris Hatch could step in. I hope you're following this one now. It's quite easy to follow, isn't it? It'll be three for Mayfairs. Three to take Mayfairs! Manelli yeah, needs to grab hold of them and leave no slack in that chain at all. Any amount of slack will enable Mayfairs to get over to that other neutral corner. That's where he's got to go. He's got three. 
He's going to try and walk along the ropes. He's going to haul him in. <laughs> it's just a match of weakening and even injuring if you're, if you're able to your opponent. Because there are no falls, no submissions, no knockouts. That doesn't matter. That's one to Manelli. It doesn't matter which way around the ring you go, but he's heading to. So now he's chosen that route. He's got a head for the red. That is the one he's got to get to. And he needs one more. He needs to come to that neutral corner, the white post. Now wow, this rumble promotion here in Holliston absolutely enthralling the crowd in a chain match. And Manelli's on the way. He's just got to touch it. And he's only an inch away, he's just got to touch it. He's got three corner pads. This is the fourth and final one. Pull, Sid, pull. And the next most important thing is to make sure Mayfair does. He's done it! He's done it! All four corner pads touched. And Sid Manelli wins this special chain challenge match. And uh, the crowd here in Hobbleston are delighted. What a YouTube spectacle from Rumble Promotions. Let's officially allow Steve Barker, MC, just uh, unshackling Simonelli so he can take the uh, full applause. Oh, I think Mayfest has something to say. Speak on that microphone. You'll have to come in. <laughs> well, this may go on for some time, everybody. But the challenge has been thrown down. A blindfold match. 
next time here in Hoddleston. And I don't think anybody cares what Tate Mayfair is about to say. And with that, as the fracas continues, I can't imagine the promoters will allow that. don't understand how things work. To get me on this will cost a lot of money. I know it just about, but I'm enough for one night. If you want that platform, that's you're going to have to get it down the line. And with that is goodbye from all of us here at the Spotlight in Hoddesdon. It's Lee Bamber at Ringside. Hope you've enjoyed it. There'll be more from Rumble on the way. From all of us at Hoddesdon, have a good time. Till next time.